Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Infiniti FX S50. As befits a premium car, there is no manual transmission on the Infiniti FX, but there is no need to cry. The Jetco RE5R05A box is a good one, tested on many Nissan cars and has earned a right to be called reliable. The FX drive is almost always full. True, you can find a rear-wheel drive American cars, but extremely rarely. In four-wheel drive vehicles, the front axle is automatically connected via a multi-plate clutch, and in the event of the transfer case malfunctions, the car also becomes purely rear-wheel drive, and this happens quite often. The mechanical part of the transmission is quite reliable. Some risk is presented by leakage of gearboxes and damage to the shoes covers, which is possible with runs over 200,000, but with minimal control, nothing scary will happen to them. If there are shocks at the start, you need to check not only the transfer case, but also the propeller shaft on the front axle. It often fails first. The transfer case on the FX is simpler than even on the Nissan Pathfinder. It is electrically locked by a magnet, not hydraulically. But the bearing problems are the same. After 100,000 mileage, it is worth listening to the work of the distributor, and after 200,000, you will probably have to change the bearings. More often, the electrofusion bearing, the rear bearing of the input shaft, and both bearings of the output shaft fail. Together, they create the lion's share of vibrations. The chain is quite reliable, and if you do not anneal every day, then with runs over 200,000 km, it is still quite alive. This is not surprising, the clutch severely limits the transmitted torque. When buying, be sure to twitch the shafts to determine the backlash and make sure that the transfer case is dry. Repair is inexpensive only if you can limit yourself to replacing the bearings, but if the coupling is overheated, it will be easier to find a contract unit. The Jetco automatic transmission is a very common RE5R05A series and is mostly known from Infiniti and Nissan, although it can also be found on Hyundai and Kia. The box is quite old school, originally from the 90s, but this can be considered not a disadvantage, but an advantage. It even has a brake band, which here is the first and only element in the box itself that has a resource and load limitation. The wear of the blocking linings of the gas turbine engine occurs only with sufficiently large mileage, but the clutches can wear out prematurely due to severe oil contamination, overheating or incorrect operation of the valve body. The box is very sensitive to the thickness and condition of the clutches and steel discs. If they are worn out, the automatic transmission will kick hard, so on cars with high mileage they can try to change them all. The main weak point of the box is the well body electronics, most precisely an electrician. The wiring to the solenoids often burns out, rather thick conductors on the board crack and burn in place of bend. The soldering on the solenoids themselves is destroyed. Sometimes a piece of wiring simply burns out damaging the weld body itself. But all this can be successfully repaired. The reasons for these failures lie in the aging of the solenoids and the increased load on them. The wedge solenoid has peak currents several times higher than in the normal state, and the block allows a large current to be supplied. In general, changes solenoids in time without fading for problems to arise. Never ride on a box with a faulty weld body. This quickly kills the mechanics of the box, and the slightest wear of the clutches is fraught with tangible kicks in the work and further complete bulkhead of the machine. The box is very sensitive to the cleanliness and temperature of the oil, so it's best to change it frequently. Once every 60,000, this is an ultimate option, better than one and a half times more often. The cold, to cool the box, it would be nice to put a large radiator. On the FX, it is well loaded, especially with a 4.5 liter engine, and with sensible maintenance, timely replacement of gas turbine engine linings and weld body repairs, the automatic transmission mechanic tolerates loads well and is capable of driving more than 400,000 km. The set of engines for the Infiniti FX is not rich, there can be two motors. But which ones? The legendary VQ35DE and VK45DE. These are quite strong and resourceful engines, albeit with their own minor flaws. For example, we catalysts significantly affect the life of the piston group. There are certain problems with oil pressure, and if the motors are overheated, skip oil change intervals or simply operate them for a long time on the original Nissan Elf oil, a pronounced oil appetite may appear. The exhaust system made of rather thin steel outwardly, outwardly keeps a stiff upper lip, but the rear muffler bank literally burns up from the inside. After 6-8 to eight years of operation, pleases with a ringing and unnecessarily loud sound. 
Interestingly, American cars are initially louder and European exhaust is quieter and better behaves as it gets older. The cooling system employs a viscous coupling with a fan. The system is reliable, but after 150 to 100,000 mileage, one shouldn't forget to update the fluid in the viscous coupling. The fan should be checked for cracks. Its plastic imp impeller may break over time and the consequences will be the most unpleasant. Usually flying blades damage the pipes of the cooling system and the radiator itself. The 3.5 liter 6 VQ 35 DE with conventional injection with some luck can travel more than 400,000 km. More often, the resource is reduced by dusty catalyst, a weak cooling system and a drop in oil pressure due to leakage of oil channels on the front wall of the block. With the catalyst, everything is clear. Cold starts, load on an unheated engine and runs over 100,000 can be considered a good reason for replacing or removing them. The thin radiator of the cooling system doesn't tolerate dirt, reagents and increased pressure in the cooling system. Well, the last problem is caused by the design of the oil channels to the phase shifters on all VQ motors. Long open type oil channels are covered with a lid on a paper bed. With age, the gasket leaks, which causes a large drop in oil pressure. And given the high load on the liners, the high oil consumption of the phase regulators and the very loaded camshafts, the engine quickly begins to kill itself. The final cord is usually a bad crankshaft. In this case, worn out camshafts, bed of shafts in the cylinder head, severe wear of the piston will not leave a chance for inexpensive repairs. The problem can be prevented by checking the timing not through the hatch, but by removing the front cover. It is necessary to check the circuits and dampers every 100-150 thousand times while changing the gaskets and channel sealant. The chains themselves are capable of passing 200-250 thousand, but for such a run the oil pressure will probably not be enough too long. The tendency to carbonization of the piston group is expressed quite clearly here. The engine doesn't like high temperatures and bad oils as well as rare oil changes. If the carbonization doesn't help, then you will have to either repair the engine or look for a contract one. Contract VQ 35 DE engines are expensive due to high demand, so they sometimes install VQ 35 DD with direct injection, replacing the cylinder head with a DE head, but leaving its original pistons. Such a replacement doesn't greatly affect the power, and the cost of the DD motor in good condition is less than 40,000 troubles, justifies all the troubles. The DE engine will cost almost twice as much. The control system is not particularly capricious, but the cleanliness of the mass airflow sensor and candles must be monitored. The engine is very sensitive to their condition, and if there are misfires, and catalysts die literally instantly. The larger VK45 DE motor differs markedly from the VQ in design. This is a V8 with a different timing and a completely different intake. The catalysts are even more sensitive here than on VQ, and many recommend removing them immediately without waiting for possible problems. The reasons for dusting are about the same. Cold starts, load on an unheated motor, control system failures. Oil appetite is more serious here and is associated with the design of the piston group. It occurs even under ideal operating conditions, it is only necessary to fill it not very persistent oil or stand in traffic jams for too long. The health of the engine may be affected by not very successful intake design. The screws from the flaps are unscrewed and fall into the cylinders. The fact is that there are no meshes here, and the screws are not locked and processed with a thread lock. So it's better to finalize the intake in a timely manner. The engine loses oil pressure over time due to wear of the oil pump. It usually doesn't come to a fist of friendship, but crankshaft and liner seizures are common. For this engine, the issue of replacing it with the VK45DD with direct injection is especially relevant. The fact is that the VK45DE was installed on a very small number of cars, and in the domestic Japanese market they can only be found on the Nissan Fuga and Chima. The bulk of cars with it are American FX45 and M45 with high mileage and low residual resource, and the repair of the V8 is very expensive. Here only the cost of spare parts will be 120-150 thousand. The high demand for contract units makes DE contract motors expensive and rare. But the VK45 DD was installed on domestic cars much more often. There were many contract engines with low mileage and imperfect condition, but they cost only 30-50 thousand troubles in Moscow. And repairs with rearrangement of the cylinder head or the introduction of wiring and ECU from Fuga Chima from the DD engine of the FX have already been worked out quite well. This operation reduces the cost of repairing the machine by more than three times. This is not to say that these motors are not tenacious. 
With timely removed catalyst and with a gradually increasing oil consumption, they can survive up to 300-400 thousand mileage, and sometimes more. It is convenient to maintain, there is enough traction, the sound is excellent. But you need to remember that the oil must be good, otherwise the engine will easily eat 2 liters per thousand kilometers. Viscosity on engines with mileage over 150-200 thousand is better to keep at least SEA40, and if you like to drive, and if not, why do you take a car with such an engine? Then it is better to fill in SAE50 or even SAE60. Low viscosity SAE30 is definitely contraindicated for it. And yet a sharp increase in oil consumption and the appearance of knocking are always possible, and an unexpectedly jammed engine after annealing should not be very surprising, even if the mileage is relatively small. On this information on the problems of the Infinity FXS50 is exhausted. If you know more or disagree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments.